Hello friends, Daphne from Blue Quarry here and in today's art session I'm going to be painting this colorful, whimsical cow. Now to be honest, this was a bit out of my comfort zone because my natural tendency has always been to lean toward realism. Not because it's a style I like, I actually prefer art that is loose and leaves room for the viewer's interpretation. The reason I tend to paint more realistically is because I'm one of those people who needs to have a reference image I can plop down in front of me and then duplicate it the best I can. I'm just not that great at painting from my imagination or even from memory, and I even sometimes struggle to paint from life, especially when painting a scene that has changing conditions. For example, when painting outside and the light is changing, or even worse, when painting people in a coffee shop or another urban environment. So those are things I've been working on, and I found that getting expressive with color is actually a great first step. That's because I can build my painting on a foundation and process that I'm comfortable with, before stepping out of my comfort zone and going a bit rogue on my color selection. I start with a quick sketch and the first layer of paint that is fairly realistic. Then, using my reference image as a guide, I choose my fun colors and lay them out in a way that still resembles the object I'm painting, but in a more loose and expressive way. So, if you are like me and you're trying to get more expressive with your painting, I would highly recommend starting by modifying your colors and then maybe taking little baby steps as you, as you start to get looser with your artwork. So this video is sped up and I do plan on making a real-time version of this painting where I fully narrate it and not only explain the colors and tools I'm using and include traceable sketches and reference images, but also explain my whole thought process behind these choices, as well as the lessons I learned and even the tricks I used to help me make the process so much simpler. So I think that would be really, really helpful for someone who is trying to get a little bit more expressive. If you are interested in learning more, check the description box below. I plan to include links there either to my online courses once I release them or to at least to my website where you can get some more information. You will also find a list of all the colors and materials used in this video in the description box below. So please check that out if you are interested. I am using a six by nine sheet of watercolor paper. And in this particular one, I happen to use student grade paper. Although I always recommend going with materials that you are comfortable using. Sadly, I'm one of those people who is not comfortable using very expensive materials when I'm when I'm practicing and learning a new technique, which is what I was doing when I was making this piece. And surprisingly, I was very pleased with it when I was finished. So yeah, it turned out okay. If you are comfortable using inexpensive student grade materials, then I say go for it. I think the most important thing that you can do is actually, you know, get your brush out, get your paper out, get your supplies out and just play and practice. And don't be super attached to the results. Just put it out there every day. And if it's not the first piece that you make, it might be the second or the third or the fifth, but eventually you will get there. And the other skill you'll learn just basically from doing and from experience is the ability to know when to stop. So I'm kind of getting to that point in my painting right now. When you find yourself putting paint on and then taking it off and then putting it on and then taking it off, that's a really good sign that you've gotten to the end <laughs> of your process. At least it is for me. And the final reveal, taking off the tape. I use washi tape. Generally when I'm working at this size, I love the fact that it doesn't rip my paper. You just wanna make sure that your paper is completely dry before you take the tape off. I also like adding little borders around my work just to kind of give it more of a whimsical hand drawn feel and I sign it and there it is. And there it is in a frame. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and also subscribe and hit the bell. And I'll see you in the next one.